Welcome back. Uh, today on the beautiful campuses of Florida Panhandle Technical College here in downtown Chipley, here today with Ed Mansuri, owner of U Compass, and uh, most appropriately for the reasons we're here today, WeatherStem. If you recall from a previous show, uh, Ed and his staff recently came into the uh, college campus, installed WeatherStem. Just a, uh, it's just too exciting to, to uh, talk about in the intro to the show, so I'm going to save all that for the show. When we come back, we're going to talk to Ed Mansuri all about WeatherStem, and we'll be right back. Aside from the selfish aspect of, of appreciating the fact that we did get it here on the campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College, it makes total sense because we have here, driven by Kathy Nelson and the rest of the staff here, a hugely proactive STEM program. Yes, I'm uh, extremely impressed with it. And we were fortunate enough, um, uh, we mean um, myself, my business and staff, to be a part of that STEM uh, week for the robotics camp mm -hmm. this year. Uh, we're notified that we would be a, a, a part of it even in a larger fashion next year. We have total buy-in. Uh, our grandkids are just getting to that age where they are of an age to be participating in those programs, sure. 11 to 14, whatever mm -hmm. that broad strokes is. We have seen uh, the kids that are in these classes they were answering questions that you posed the last visit you made here that I couldn't have answered. Sure. That's where the kids are at now. They're yeah. not getting the education. We gripe about public education, mm -hmm. and in some cases it is a little stilted compared to the classical education that maybe you and I might have received. Sure. But in other ways, science, technology, engineering, and math, way accelerated. And your program allows them buy-in to, uh, to that process. That said, how do you, I know broad strokes what the educational component of what you're doing is, how do you see those children on a day-to-day -day basis taking advantage and using and learning from WeatherStem? Well, that's an, an excellent question. And uh, I think that the, from an educational point of view, one of the things that we're really focused on is this idea of supplementing the educational experience with live real world data. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's for me probably one of the strongest um, points from an educational perspective of this program is, is I think that uh, I, I think there are our um, experiences have already shown us that if you give a problem to a kid, if you give a math problem and problem one has data that is meaningless and abstract to them, that was made up by who knows who, who knows when, and then you, you give the same problem, but you introduce it with data that is contextually um, relevant to them. So this is data that was collected here at Florida Panhandle Technical College, or this is data that was collected during a recent Florida State University football game. There's, there's a level, we, we suspect that there's an increase in the level of engagement. And, and you know, we don't have any quantitative or qualitative data to back that up yet. It's sort of purely observational at this point, based on some, some case studies and some focus studies we've done. But we think we're going in the right direction. And there's been a lot of research that suggests that um, student engagement is directly proportional to improvements and gains in standardized test scores. And of course, for better or worse, our public education system penalizes and rewards uh, school districts based on the outcomes and the improvements on standardized test scores. So um, that, that's sort of one of our strategies here as far as how we hope weather STEM to be used from an educational perspective is to just bring the world that's outside the fascinating, always changing world and bring it as it happens into the classroom to augment and extend the learning process as it pertains to math, science and all STEM related fields. It sounds a little trite perhaps, but I almost equate weather STEM with the farmer's almanac on steroids because mm. getting away from the educational and going more to the practical, mm. Whether you're a surfer or a farmer or an, a, an, a weekend fisherman, whatever you're bent, if you do anything outdoors, it's weather driven. Yes. Festivals mm. and outdoor yeah. events. So where the, where the Farmer's Almanac was based on uh, anecdote or anecdotal information over many, many years, you're actually going to have, as you point out, hard data so that you know how that drop in barometric pressure equated to, along with the overcast day, um, ultimately, how the field crops sure. did that, yes. that season. Mm -hmm. um, 
what has been the interest from the agricultural side? You, you, you keep mentioning the STEM and the educational part. Mm -hmm. um, has uh, Adam Putnam's uh, uh, Department of Agriculture, has, has there been a state interest in the agricultural portion of what you're doing? Well, um, just to, to back up a little bit, I'll, I'll get to the agricultural focus, but I, I want to say that I think um, I, I was a huge fan of the Farmer's Almanac. I used to read it cover to cover, you know, back and forth many times when I was a kid. Um, and I, I think we're just at the tip of the iceberg of really understanding all the different ways weather impacts us as, as human beings, um, you know, more so than we ever could have imagined. Uh, and I think the data, you know, as we have more and more systems that are collecting more and more data, weather data, health data, I think we're going to see that we're organisms that are physically, mentally, emotionally impacted by weather way more than we ever imagined. And I think we're going to be able to use that in helping kids schedule classes and helping them, you know, fill out their academic schedules. Um, so, you know, I, I wanted to just make that point. Uh, from an agric agricultural perspective, uh, we have not yet had the pleasure of meeting Commissioner Putnam or any of his direct team. Uh, we have engaged with some folks from the Department of Agriculture, uh, particularly FAWN, which is, uh, FAWN is ran by IFAS down at the University of Florida, which is the Florida Automated Weather Network. Uh, the gentleman in charge of it uh, has uh, actually is a gentleman I went to graduate school with uh, for meteorology at Florida State, and he's been very complimentary of what we've been doing. And, and his department's primary role is the collection of weather data from agricultural sites in a way that can help agriculturalists drive decisions as far as, you know, protecting crops, harvesting, spraying, et cetera. Um, we also, there have been several counties where we have introduced weather stem onto farms, particularly first and foremost is Madison, where we've actually installed weather stem on six different farms across the county. And in your backyard. And yes, absolutely, just a couple counties over from Tallahassee. Uh, so a couple watermelon farms, a couple hay farms, row crop farms, uh, and already a year into that project, we've had tremendous positive feedback about how they're actually using it. And, and our vision, what we want to see happen, we, we've made some attempts uh, and we're gonna keep trying we want to, our vision is to form innovative school farm partnerships. So for instance, in Madison County, we've brought weather stem to all five of the county's public schools. And there are also, uh, at each school has a farm in relative close proximity to the school with a weather stem unit on it. So the school has a weather stem unit, the farm has a weather stem unit. Let's give students activities where they can learn how to sort of be meteorologists on behalf of the farmers. Let's teach them how to use this instrumentation to provide real-time, proactively driven alerts and updates to the farmers. So those farmers that I've met them, they work 18, 19 hours a day, even if they have access to this technology, do they have the time to really use it as a resource that's maybe going to help them uh, imp positively impact their bottom line? So that, that's sort of one of our visions that we, we want to develop. And, and we're go so each of the counties where we're bringing weather stem, such as Washington and, and Homes and a lot of the areas across the Panhandle, we're looking for opportunities where we can maybe try certain things like that. 